I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. The Department of Justice has just filed their sentencing memorandum in connection with the Oath Keepers' seditious conspiracy convictions. This is an omnibus sentencing report for multiple Oath Keepers, including Elmer Stewart Rhodes III, the leader of the Oath Keepers, who the Department of Justice recommends a 25-year sentence. This is an incredibly well-written and scathing sentencing report uh, prepared by the Department of Justice request that the federal judge sentence these Oath Keepers, sentence these terrorists who are convicted of their crimes to the essentially max allowed by law, more than any previous defendant has been sentenced with. And in fact, for many of these individuals, the Department of Justice is requesting a terrorist enhancement, an upward departure of where the sentencing guidelines say these individuals uh, should be sentenced to. So let me break down what this report states. Um, it is a powerful, powerful report. Let's just take a look at the individuals who are listed here. You got Stuart Rhodes, Kelly Meggs, Kenneth Harrelson, Jessica Watkins, Robert Minuta, Joseph Hackett, David Morshell, Thomas Caldwell, and Edward Vallejo, all who have been convicted of their crimes by uh, juries. And let me read for you the government's omnibus sentencing memorandum and motion for upward departure. It states, the defendants were prepared to fight, not for their country, but against it. In their own words, they were willing to die in a guerrilla war to achieve their goal of halting the transfer of power after the 2020 presidential election. As a co-conspirator recognized, their actions made these defendants traitors, using their positions of prominence within and affiliation with the Oath Keeper organization. These defendants played a central role and a damning role in opposing by force the government of the United States, breaking the solemn oath many of them swore as members of the United States Armed Forces. To support their operation, they amassed an arsenal of firearms across the Potomac River and led a conspiracy that culminated in a mob's attack on the United States Capitol while our elected representatives met in a joint session of Congress. Two juries found all nine defendants guilty of participating in this grave conduct. These defendants are unlike any of the hundreds of others who have been sentenced for their roles in the attack on the Capitol. Each defendant therefore deserves a significant sentence of incarceration. After adopting the PSR's factual findings, and PSR stands for pre-sentencing reports, after adopting the pre-sentencing reports factual findings, chapter two specific offense characteristics and chapter three adjustments, and then departing upwards from the sentencing guideline range based on the defendant's terroristic conduct under section 3A1.4 note 4, the court should impose the following terms of incarceration. Rhodes, 25 years. Meggs, 21 years. Watkins, 18 years. Minuta, 17 years. Vallejo, 17 years. Harrelson, 15 years. Caldwell, 14 years. Hackett, 12 years. Morshell, 10 years. Uh, the sentencing memorandum then goes on to discuss what took place and talks about the summary of evidence. The defendants led and participated in a conspiracy by members and affiliates of a group known as the Oath Keepers to oppose by force the lawful transfer of presidential power from Donald Trump to President-elect Joseph Biden. Think about that, though. Starting in the factual background, calling out Donald Trump, because when you think about it, if we're talking about a seditious conspiracy, ultimately the Department of Justice wants to remind the court that Donald Trump was involved in this. They each agreed to do so by, among other things, preventing, hindering, 
or delaying Congress's certification of the 2020 presidential election on January 6th, 2021, end by using force, intimidation, or threats to prevent members of Congress from charging their duties that day. As you go on in the sentencing memorandum, it talks about the upward departures, how the conduct by these individuals was a form of terrorism. Let me read that portion for you right now on page 58, 59. By the way, of this 100-plus page sentencing memorandum, nearly 200-page sentencing memorandum, the court should depart upward from the guidelines range for each of the defendants relevant conduct in this case for the basis explained below and in the sentencing allocution section for each defendant an upward departure is warranted for all nine defendants whose relevant conduct was quote calculated to influence or affect the conduct of government by intimidation coercion or to retaliate against government conduct all nine defendants were active participants in a sweeping conspiracy to oppose by force the lawful transfer of presidential power the jury's guilty verdicts with respect to count one seditious conspiracy are accompanied by specific findings that Rhodes, Meggs, Minuta, Hackett, Morshell, and Vallejo agreed to oppose by force the authority of the United States government or to use force to prevent, hinder, or delay the execution of the laws governing the presidential transfer of power. It then goes on to cite the jury verdict forms where that language is contained. And it says, similarly, the jury's guilty verdicts with respect to counts two and three, conspiracy to obstruct and obstruction of an official proceeding, carry with them the finding that all nine defendants intended to obstruct or impede the certification proceeding and the jury's guilty verdicts with respect to count four conspiracy to prevent officers from discharging their duties necessarily mean the juries found that Meggs, Harrelson, Watkins, Menuda, Hackett, Morshell, and Vallejo knowingly agreed to use force or intimidation to stop members of Congress from discharging their duties, thereby inducing them to flee the House and Senate floor where the certification proceeding had been underway. It then goes on to say, the defendant's statements after breaching the Capitol further indicate that their intent had been to coerce and intimidate the government, and they sought to continue doing so. For instance, on the evening of January 6th, Rhodes wrote, Patriots entering their own capital to send a message to the traitors is nothing compared to what's coming. Meggs wrote, we aren't quitting, we are reloading, and also posted a video of Stack One's breach of the Capitol, along with the caption, Florida OK takes the Capitol. Meg's wife, Connie Meggs, another convicted co-conspirator who also breached the Capitol building, wrote that she and the group heard about Mike Pence being a, and this is what it says here, so I was reading this, faggot, and everyone went to the Capitol to stop the vote. Watkins wrote that she and her group had, quote, stormed the Capitol and forced their way towards the Senate and House chambers. Caldwell wrote that they had stormed the Capitol, and if we had guns, I guarantee we would have killed 100 politicians. Vallejo wrote, we have only begun to fight. The following morning, Vallejo told other co-conspirators that he was going back to the Capitol to perform recon and probe their defense line, and that he and his group were now at war. These are just a sample of the numerous statements made by the defendants indicating their coercive, intimidating intent. These statements demonstrate that the defendants sought to effect, that is, obstruct Congress by stopping the certification proceeding while also retaliating against Congress for what they perceived to be a fraudulent presidential election. The defendants thus evinced an intent to both influence and affect government conduct 
through their intimidation and coercion to retaliate against government conduct. And so for all of those reasons, the Department of Justice is recommending an upward departure with Stuart Rhodes specifically. Um, they're requesting a 25-year sentence. And um, with the recent Proud Boys conviction as well, um, they'll likely be looking at a very, very similar uh, type of sentencing when that gets to sentencing. So the next step that uh, happens, the uh, Oath Keeper lawyers will file their response. There will be a hearing, but I think that the court is going to agree with the government here. And I think we're going to see these significant sentences um, that are going to be applied to these Oath Keepers. But big news, a powerful sentencing memorandum from the Department of Justice, and I'm proud I can share that with you here on the Midas Touch Network. I'm Ben Micellis. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch, and also wherever you get audio podcasts, just subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast. Okay, hit subscribe right now on this YouTube channel. It is free and have a great day. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.